As a companion to the work done to improve worker and patient safety through crashworthiness, the team recognized that to fully implement these changes, the layout of the patient compartment had to change. For example, for a new seating and restraint system to be effective, the practitioner actually needs to be seated and restrained while treating patients. To accomplish this goal, the U.S. government partnered with representatives from the EMS community to better understand the job duties and tools involved at each level of service BLS, ALS, and transport. By understanding these things, engineers and scientists were armed with the information they needed to develop a design guidebook that could be used by any level of service. The guidebook will help EMS organizations design a safe and efficient patient compartment so that practitioners can stay seated and restrained while treating a patient. This module will help you understand how an efficient patient compartment can improve your overall safety. The first step in the process is to really know your service. And once you understand the needs of your service, you will have the tools you need to design the right ambulance for you. One of the things that we're talking about in this video series is the development of new patient compartments to improve worker safety, but also improve patient care. Interiors of ambulances are going to change and uh, instead of taking an outside-in approach to design you know, where we uh, would look at equipment and where the equipment needs to go and then build in and, and somewhere fit in a, a medic and a patient, uh, you're now seeing an, an inward-out approach. You start with keeping a patient safe, you start with keeping a medic safe, and then you build that environment around them. And so with that becomes a whole host of new opportunities and new ways to approach vehicle design and vehicle safety. Identify what you want to achieve. And I think that was our starting point as um, what we wanted to achieve is a configuration that ensured that the paramedic was seat belted uh, during the transport phase and could still touch their equipment. By having things within reach, doesn't necessarily compromise how we take care of the patient, but it, it's smarter. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a second thought. We need it to be a primary thought in the sense that primary seating position, what can we do without moving? And the positive end is, is it becomes safer. The first step in trying to design a safer and more efficient patient compartment is to understand the primary duties of your service. Do you run advanced life support calls? Or are you a basic life support or intra-facility transport service? Before you start designing, you really have to know what your service does. What type of patient do you treat most often? How far do you travel to the hospital? How often do you transport more than one patient? Where do you most often sit? Where are your equipment and supplies located? Can you reach the controls for the lighting, HVAC, and communication? Do you have to get out of your seat to reach the patient? What works and does not work in your ambulance today? Often you already have this data within your system. The first task is to mine this existing data. When you're reviewing your call volume and call type, think about where you prefer to sit, where you are best able to monitor an IV or take your patient's blood. Do you prefer the ability to see your patient's face to ensure they're comfortable and relaxed? If your preference is to sit next to the patient's chest to accomplish these tasks, then this might be the best location to be identified as your primary care position. That primary seating position should have within arm's reach the controls, the operations that you need to have in the back of the ambulance, whether it be as simple as turning on the oxygen or turning on a specific light or suction or any of those critical components you need to have within arm's reach. Pulling your data actually allows you to right size your ambulance versus buying an ambulance that is overbuilt and with items and infrastructure that you don't necessarily need. One of the tools the government is providing you to help you design the ambulance that is right for you is the new ambulance patient compartment human factors design guidebook. This guidebook provides you a step-by-step -step process to design an ambulance with safety and efficiency in mind. The design guidebook is a tool for that EMS service to design their next ambulance based on their needs, not the needs of everyone else. Today, the book actually asks the questions 
um, of the people that are buying the ambulance is, okay, what's going to work for you? Do you need to be able to carry two patients? Uh, is the equipment that you use most often, is it reachable? So in using the guidebook, we really didn't intend for it to be a very complicated way of designing an ambulance. We really do envision provider organizations to sit down with either a pen and paper and draw out the design they're considering. Or we've seen, and we've actually done, sat down and mocked up a compartment in just an office using chairs and tables and cardboard boxes. If you think of the layout using a single patient model, where are you going to locate that patient? Where are you going to work most of the time when you have that patient? You have just identified your primary patient care position. Now that you have identified the primary patient care position, what tools do you use most often? How much space do they take up? Where will you locate them? And don't forget about the lighting and HVAC controls and your communication tools. These all need to be within reach to ensure that you're able to treat your patient while seated and restrained. If you traditionally run two people in the back, some of these can be duplicated in two locations so that you can work as a team. Take your time, um, look at every possible layout, even if you don't think it will work. Look at demos, get everybody's input, um, talk to people from all over the place, and then look at your call volume and your demographics. Where are you spending the majority of your time in the back of the unit, in the back of the ambulance, treating the patient? and then let's design around that area first and foremost, then tell me where your secondary and third options are gonna be, if there is a third option, um, and then move controls over there if need be. Um, and it's no different than if I uh, move into a new office and I get a new desk, I'm gonna put my computer where I'm gonna be sitting and facing that screen, I'm gonna put my phone next to it, I'm gonna lay out my desk area so that it makes sense and fits me for the way I'm working. And we want to ask the same questions of the, the end users and the, the paramedics and the EMTs where they're going to be, where they're going to spend the most of their time and put the tools uh, around them so that they don't have to get out of the seat and they can stay um, belted in and be safer where they're at and still be able to perform the functions of their jobs. The takeaway message from this module is that your next ambulance has to work for you. The good news is that you already have the tools to make this happen. You know your run history, you know what works and doesn't work in your ambulance, and it's up to you to put the pieces together. We encourage you to utilize the Ambulance Patient Compartment Human Factors Design Guidebook to design your next ambulance.